Welcome to Gigabyte's Pala Lunch. Hope everyone staying safe. My name is Michael, your host for today, today's webinar. Most of you probably already know, Gigabyte has products and solutions ranging from consumer to enterprise. And today we're very pleased to be presenting our bricks, the mini PC that we call the perfect fit for any space and a fit for a variety of locations. With the release of Intel's new platform and brand new CPU and GPU, our BRICS is re receiving an upgrade to fit in more scenarios that demand higher performance. As we begin our introduction today, let's go over the agenda. Our BRICS product managers will join the webinar to give you an introduction to our new BRICS, how it fit into the new technology tech generation and different scenarios, and go over some of the key features and highlight specs. There are Bricks promo videos to go along with their presentation, including a media review and an unboxing video. During today's webinar, if you have any questions regarding our presentation content, please feel free to put them in the comment box. We will have a QA session before the end of this brick launch webinar. However, if you have any question on the topic during the webinar, feel free to leave it in the comment at any time. We highly welcome you to stay till the end. We have a lucky draw with amazing prizes for today's participants. Soon I'm going to have John and Hunter, our product managers, to start our product presentation. But first, let's watch a short promo video. Let this first launch event begin. Hello to everyone that's been joining our live webinar event. My name is John. It is our pleasure to welcome you all to introduce uh, our newest BRICS Pro lineup uh, based on Intel's latest 11 Gen Core processor. At Gigabyte, our focus is to bring the latest technologies uh, for all our customers in order to enhance their work and upgrading their life. So let me get started with introducing our BRICS Pro. The new BRICS Pro adopts the latest 11th gen Intel processor that delivers extreme performance and amazing response time. At the same time, increases the efficiency of multitasking by a multi-core platform. BRICS Pro equips the 28 watt Intel core processors with advanced power management, a brand new module architecture, and optimized IC design providing superb performance than its predecessors. This new processor also delivers the most powerful Intel integrated graphics to date, the Intel Iris Xe. Enhanced by the Iris Xe graphics core, Gigabyte's new Bricks Pro offers optimized graphics performance for users to experience more details that can support four HDMI outputs to display on multiple monitors simultaneously with up to 4K resolution. This would provide excellent computing performance on multiple displays for commercial applications or entertainment like watching your favorite sports teams on display in high resolution. Moreover, this new Intel platform comes with integrated Thunderbolt 4 and PCIe Gen 4 capability, which accelerates efficiency and storage expandabilities. All of these amazing features combine into a small form factor that delivers top performance that fits almost anywhere you want it. So to tell you more about Bricks Pro, I'd like to introduce Hunter Lee, who is our main product manager that uh, hosts our whole product line, Fritz Hunter. Thank you, John. Hi, everybody. Nice to be you guys online. My name is Hunter. I'm in charge of the product, Fritz product. Today is my present to introduce a new Fritz Pro product line. It's one of kind, the top performance product we have made. So I want to bring up some topic today for today's uh, event. 
my topic will be not all the mini PC are the same. So let's take a look about what the agenda is gonna be. So today we're gonna to look about the mini PCs. Now in the mini PC, actually Gigabyte would be one of the pioneers to make a mini PC in the market. Our first project, the bridge product, about in the seven years ago. Until now, it's the top three in the in the world for the making the mini PCs. But again, in the past, a lot of people thinking the mini PC in the traditionally they thinking it's like small machine, maybe slow, maybe like low power, but cannot do anything fancy. But in reality, right now, it's, since doing Intel 10 nanometer manufacturer processing, now we bring a brand new the little beast to the market for you. So let's take a look about next slide. So you will see this the machine we made made of right now. It's very tiny. If you see the uh, dimension wise, it's just like about like the, your working drop, you know, like a water bottle size. It's less than 1.2 liter the size. To do that, it spent a lot of love, like the engineer effort to making the powerful machine into this small machine. Okay, so it's what we call a size does matter. Trying to come to make everything possible into the small form factor in here. So let's slide, see the next slide. In this slide, it tells you exactly how our development cycles. We started from going up, we're looking into the platform, what the platform brings us. For example, like latest turnable building, the latest Intel XC graphic, we look into the product platform first. And then we think about it, what's perfect size for it. Then in this project, we're choosing like the SBC size, that is four by six inch size. In this size, we're trying to do it would be like masterpiece of the Intel platform. No matter the Intel Tiger Lake platform brings in, we're adding those features into this small tiny PC. So it's starting with minimize the size, we pick the size, it's four by six inch. And then next one we're looking into is uncompromised performance. Yes, a lot of people say it's like the DDMA. You cannot have the performance like with the size at the same time. But right now we made it. Thanks to our R&D, how it works, we're able to make a small PC but maintain powerful performance. So after the performance has been tuned, the next question will be bring up, the thermal. It's always the issue with a small machine with like a big power room, CPU inside, how can you take out the heat out of the system? So again, our thermal engineer also spent a lot of time working with us, working with the mechanical R&D, we making the good, great solution for the thermal. And after that, everything, every done, we're trying to do will be next step will be durability test. You know, when we sell the machine, we're not just like one shot deal. We're not just sell the machine to you and forget it. We want to make a machine good, reliable for more than three years, around the couple of three years. And then we want during the three years, you have no brown at all. Anytime you have problem, you can call our RMA center. We have the dedicated person can help you to assist you to either do RMA return or do a repairment for you. So that's a com our commitment for that. And after all, that's also turning to the customer service. We're selling in many countries. We have many global partnerships as well. You always can find a place you can when you need the assistant. Or you also can use our online assistant as well. So all together, everything together, minimize size and compromise performance and thermal solution, durability test, and back to the customer service. It's always linked together. It's always like chain. No matter what product we build, we always follow the same pattern over and over again. It turns out of, we want to make the best mini PC in the market for you. So let's go to the next page. Let's see how advanced, how many tough jobs we did in here. If you see the picture on your left hand side, that's a new Tiger Lake chip in here. You see they found a lot of new stuff like a turnable four building, PCA 4x4, directly from CPU. You got three times faster graphic engine inside, and also better new wheel core, the CPU architecture inside. So everything Intel trying to do is bring out the most powerful mobile CPU in the market. To do that. If you see your right hand side, as I mentioned before, our PCB size is about four by six inch. In this small tiny PCB inches, we try to do is adding a lot of bug feature, no matter like Intel promise to you. 
So for example, you will see on the bottom you will see two M.2 SSD slots here. One is from the PCIe PCI Gen 3 by 4 and the other one is a high speed PCIe Gen 4 by 4 directly from CPU. They offer twice bandwidth compared to the Gen 3 by 4. So that ensure you can always get a fast SSD as a speed, no matter what. And then to increase the memory performance, we're supporting DDR4, 3200MHz, SOD, we can use a 2 up to 64 gig in memory in this machine. Also, for connectivity-wise, in this machine, so dual LAN, you got the Intel Gigabit Ethernet and 2.5 gig Intel LAN as well. Plus, for Wi-Fi, a lot of people like Wi-Fi right now. Of course, in this machine also, we're using the latest Intel Wi-Fi 6 module in here. So, no matter you're using the fixed LAN or Wi-Fi, we always can fit with the latest technology to you. And don't mention that. We also come including the Thunderbolt inside here. So if you see that Thunderbolt will be on your on the far left hand side there. So everything together plus four HDMI output. In the past, if you want to make anything from the integrated CPU with four discrete output, almost very difficult. You need to get a discrete graphic card. But thanks to Intel Revolution Tech Techland uh, platform, we're able to do up to five output. You can forge there plus one to the ball and maximum you can do continuously four 4K output at the same time. So it's five output interface with the four output continuously. So that's very amazing. So let's take a look at the next slide. But again, it's all back to not all the P mini PCs are the same. The reason we talk about this, this uh this two chart actually is directly from Intel. Oh, we did not make any story in here. This is from Intel. If you see the left hand side, it's talking about the CPU wise. The in the new Tiger Lab platform, Intel making a new segment in here. They say the Tiger Lab CPU in here, if you see here, they starting from 12 watt to 28 watt. That's mean the CPU can take in from the 12 watt up to 28 watt, no matter what. So manufacturer wise, manufacturer to making a PC or notebook, they can decide how fast or how much power this CPU can come can, can be consumed. So what's different between the different voltage? Simple, if you see your right hand side, that's another chart compared to, if you're using the 15 watt to feed into the CPU compared to 28 watt, on the same CPU, you see a behavior is totally different. With the 28 watt, you see the performance almost 40% faster. But you always try, you always have trade off. You want high performance, that's turned off to the, you, creating more heat and more power consuming, you always like that. So how can we solve this problem? Let's take a look, next slide. So there it is, that's our architecture, right? So you will see on the left hand side, that's our main board designing. You see on your left hand side, right, left hand side of the CPU, and rest of space, you can see everything here, all the power supply circuits. We want to make sure the ball stays on CPU. When they enable the turbo mode, you don't need to worry about any throttle. You don't need to worry about you don't have enough power to supply and CPU just slow down. We want to make sure you always get the best the power su supply to the CPU and make the CPU performing the best. And then again, a lot of people know when you're doing the more power, that's mean more heat. So how we do it? So if you see middle, we create a brand new the thermal kit in here with 100% all copper with a heat pipe solution with big fan blower. So that enable to that helping us to exhaust all the heat from the machine. Exhaust it out as soon as possible. And last one, we're using 135 watt power adapter. Why? The reason is right now the Intel CPU have new behavior. They call PL1 and PL2. When the PL1 and PL2 is equal to in the past, we call it turbo mode. In us, so when the CPU runs the PL2 in turbo mode mode, actually CPU not only taking 28 watt, they simply can up to 70 to even to 90 watt in the many seconds. So in that situation, if you don't have the big adapter in there, then your CPU will be shut down by itself because you don't able to support enough juice. All the other you can do, like some of our competitors, 
they will do, they just lock the CPU. They're not able to making the CPU to run turbo mode. So they can use a cheaper component to do that. But in Gearbyte, we don't do that. We want to unleash all the performance from this CPU. That's why we never compromising anything, any detail. That's why combined with the hardware design, great thermal design with good power solution, we want to unleash the Tiger to your desk. That's everything we try to make up in here. So let's come back to the end. So with a new platform, we're able to allow you to see the CPU from up to 40%, 20% faster in the memory, and also up to four times faster compared to the last generation Intel UHD. And then best of all, our storage it got two times faster compared to the last generation PCI Gen 3 by 4 So that be on my presentation for today. And now we want to show our media unboxing video and also performance testing video. Thank you. In recent years, we've seen the desktop PC evolve and improve in a number of ways. With that in mind, we're going to look today at the latest Gigabyte Bricks. The Bricks series, as you may or may not know, is very similar to Intel's Nook in that it takes a high-performance mobile PC platform and puts it in a small form factor PC that you can fit in the palm of your hand. The latest Bricks from Gigabyte is the Bricks Pro, which is based on Intel's 11th generation Tiger Lake platform. Let's take a look at what you get in the box, the key features of the device, and the performance gains we can expect from the new Intel platform. So let's take a look and see what you're getting inside the box. There we go. Okay, so here is the actual bricks itself. We'll put that to one side. And here we can see a Power adapter, this is a 135 watt power adapter. And we also have a, this is the power cable for the power adapter. We have a Wi-Fi antenna and a stand so that it can be vertically mounted on your desk. Now, digging a little deeper, we can find that we have driver discs and a Visa mounting plate. Okay, so let's put that to one side. Here it is. So the first impressions of the device is obviously that it's very compact. It does indeed fit in the palm of your hand, even though it is slightly longer than some of the nooks that we've seen before. One good thing I like to see from Gigabyte is that they've gone for a metal chassis, uh, which is very robust and feels very strong and high-end in the hand. And as noted, we, it also comes with some mounting brackets, I should say, which means that as well as being able to mount it flat on your desk, you can also mount it vertically to further save space. And as noted before, being a metal chassis, we have a magnetized Wi-Fi antenna which can attach like so. So let's take a look at the pretty generous I.O. that you're getting on this device. Starting at the front here, we have two audio jacks. One is for microphone, one for headphone. And then we have a pretty generous array of USB 3.2 ports right here in the front, which is useful if you want to attach uh, storage or thumb drives or whatever you have. Uh, next to that, we have a HD activity LED and a power switch. The power switch also illuminates when the device is turned on. Moving around to the back, we have a further two uh, USB 3.2 ports and two Ethernet ports, which is quite unusual for a mini PC. Uh, it's interesting to know one of these is gigabit LAN and the other is 2.5 gigabit LAN. Next to that, we have four HDMI ports, which is unusual. I've never seen four HDMI ports on a mini PC before. This is something you would only usually see with a high-end discrete graphics card. What's further more interesting is that these, each of these HDMI ports support 4K at 60 hertz display output, which is pretty impressive. Next to that, we have a Thunderbolt port, which will actually give you an 8K 60 hertz display output, as well as being really handy for hooking up an external graphics card or daisy chaining your high-end, high bandwidth storage. Next to that, we have the uh, Wi-Fi connectors and the power connector. And as with a lot of mini PCs on the market, the Bricks Pro is sold as a bare-bone PC kit. Now that means you have to install your own storage, memory, and operating system, which of course means you're gonna have to get inside the device. To do that, you need to first access these two screws on the rear. Let's take a look at how that works. So just gonna remove the two screws. Like so. And 
then we simply slide off the front, it just pops off like that. And there you have it, we can see the interior of the Brix Pro. So straight away you can see the Gigabyte have packed quite a lot into a small space. And what jumps out for me immediately is the fact that you're getting two M.2 slots here. This is perfect for your NVMe drives, not least because this guy here provides four lanes of PCIe Gen 4, a first for a mobile platform. You also have a second M.2 slot which provides four lanes of PCIe Gen 3. Next to that we have our Wi-Fi module which, is, which actually provides 802.11ax or if you prefer Wi-Fi 6. Uh, Wi-Fi connectivity and we also have Bluetooth 5.1. On the side here we can see a pair of uh, SO DIMM memory slots and the memory support is 3200 megahertz which is the fastest that you've ever seen on a mobile platform. So there you have it, the new Gigabyte Brix Pro, arguably the next evolution of the mini PC. This will be available in November and it will be the first of its kind to support the new Intel Tiger Lake platform. Now don't forget to check out other videos on the Gigabyte YouTube channel, which will also include a video review of this device. You may have seen in the previous video, we introduced the very latest Gigabyte Brix Pro, which is a highly evolved mini PC, which uses the very latest Intel Tiger Lake platform. Tiger Lake is the successor to Intel's Ice Lake platform, and it's one which introduces better graphics, higher memory, and a revised CPU architecture known as Willow Code. So what we have inside here is a Intel Core i7-1165G7. Now just to unpack that for you, that means it's the 11th generation, 65 represents the highest SKU in the series, and G7 represents the highest level of graphics. It's a four core, eight thread CPU with each core having a base clock of 1.2 gigahertz. However, a single core can boost as high as 4.7 gigahertz, which is quite remarkable. Now to achieve that, what Gigabyte has found that the CPU will fluctuate in terms of power draw quite considerably. Now to make sure that the CPU gets enough juice, Gigabyte is actually packaging the Gigabyte Brix Pro with a 135 watt adapter. That makes sure that the CPU is never gonna have any trouble and there'll be no throttling of clocks and the maximum performance can be achieved. So for our benchmark comparison, we're gonna compare the Brix Pro, its Tiger Lake platform with an Intel Nook running the previous 10th generation, which is the Comet Lake platform. It's important to note that the CPU here has six cores and 12 threads, and system memory running at 266 megahertz, whereas, of course, if you recall on the Brix Pro, we're talking about four cores and eight threads with memory frequency of 3200 megahertz. Let's look at the benchmarks. Let's start with one of the most commonly used GPU benchmarks, Cinebench R20. Here you can see that the 11th generation Tiger Lake platform pushes ahead with an improved performance score of 5%. This might not seem like a huge difference, but when you consider that the Comet Lake platform has two extra cores and four extra threads, it's remarkable that the new platform wins at all. Geekbench is another popular CPU test, offering both single core and multi-core performance metrics. In the single core race, the Core i7-1165G7 pulls ahead by more than 13%. Significant gains for the new platform. However, when utilizing the performance of all six cores and 12 threads, the Core i7-10710U claims a 10% advantage. PC Mark 10 is all about system memory, CPU, and GPU. The new platform takes a substantial lead of more of 27% which is made even more impressive when you consider the difference in physical cores. Focusing on graphics performance, let's start with 3 d Mark Time Spike, a really grueling test usually reserved for desktop PCs using a discrete GPU. Straight away, we can see that the new and improved Iris Xe iGPU has much more punching power, claiming a win by an incredible 64%. 3D Mark Skydiver is designed to test mobile platforms. And once again, we see the BRICS has a massive advantage, pulling ahead by a solid 60%. Further proof that Intel's latest platform packs considerable GPU punch. Now it's time to consider if Tiger Lake's PCIe Gen 4 support really offers advantages in terms of data bandwidth. 
First off, it's interesting to note that despite being pretty close, the PCIe Gen 3 based NUC produces a 4.55% performance lead in the sequential write test. In the 4K read and write testing, however, we see some very meaningful gains for the newer PCIe Gen 4 capable system, with a 28% lead in the write test and an incredible 66% gain in the read test. So while we're on the topic of performance, you can clearly see that with Tiger Lake we're getting a very significant boost over the previous generation. But it's also important to note that with Tiger Lake we're also getting Thunderbolt 4.0, which gives us a data bandwidth of up to 32 gigabits per second, which is pretty incredible. And what this means is that with the mini PC, this mini PC or this generation of mini PC, we're now able to connect something like this. This is a gigabyte gaming box. You can put in here a high-end graphics card and you can enjoy the highest gaming experience ever, which means that for many PCs now have evolved to a space where there are literally no limitations. So let's just unpack everything you're getting with the new Brix Pro. First of all, you're getting Intel's latest Tiger Lake platform, which has given us the fastest mobile CPU architecture yet. Couple that with the fastest DDR at 3200 MHz. You've also got Gen 4 PCIe which is going to give you the fastest storage that you can have. Then you've got Iris XE graphics, which not only gives you three times better graphics performance, but also access to four HDMI ports, powering displays at 4K at 60 Hertz. Now you can add to that Thunderbolt 4.0, which is going to give you not only great connectivity for your storage devices, but also access to the high-end GPUs that we have right here. So altogether, what you have is the perfect solution for a high-end consumer's business or commercial segments. This will be available in November, and please don't forget to check out other videos on the Gigabyte channel. Hope you enjoyed our presentation and found the contents to be useful. We're really excited to have, you, to have our partners to get their hands on this Brix Pro and see, the, see its amazing performance and capabilities for their customers and their business. Now let's jump into our Q&A session and hopefully you have your questions ready for our product managers. John and Hunter, please. All right, so uh, Hunter and I will go over our questions from our live viewers. So the first question I see is coming from Turkey. So is Gigabyte Brix ready to use right out of the box, Hunter? Hi, John. Nice to meet everybody. It's a nice question. Uh, in most of our brick systems, uh, when we shoot up, it's like we call so called a bare bone system. That means it did need you to get memory, storage, and operating system to, to install it. So we call it L6 system, it's bare bone system. And then you, if you don't know where to get or type the component you bet, you can always go to our website. Our supporting pages have a list about the what compatibility the product this in here like DDR memory or SSD module you can buy. Thank you. Okay. So the next question is, what kind of applications do usually bricks are using? Uh, John, that's a nice question too. A lot of you are thinking about a small PC. How can I do? What should I do about this one? Actually, with a small PC, actually a lot of people are using not only for home entertainment. You will see the machine actually being used in many different places. For example, like the ATM machine, you withdraw the, the money from the ATM machine. It, actually, a lot of ATM machine inside size, small pieces like bricks. Or like kiosk machine, you go to the restaurant, you order the dish, the kiosk machine, usually they also use the bricks too. But also they have a high usage. For example, like the machine we talked about today, the Tiger Lab one, the 4x4K output is great for the digital signing. If you want to have a digital signing purpose, this machine, one machine can match in four, four by four, four K output. That's amazing. Thank you. Okay. So I have a question, Kancher. So usually all those airports we see for digital signage, those can use Brix application as well, right? Yeah, of course. Okay. Of course. Great. So uh, one more thing, one more question. Let's see. Does Brix have a Visa mount bracket? Oh, that's another great question. Great question too. All the Brix come with a Visa mount bracket. You can use the Visa mount brick to hook up the machine behind the screen or any place also fit into the Visa mouse standard. So you don't need to put on a desk, you can put any place you like. Okay. Another question coming from Thailand. 
What is the key feature on this new generation? That's another great question, John. Uh, again, today we all talk about the Intel platform, the Tiger Lab platform, how powerful the machine. But to me, most attractive to me is two things. One is 4 by 4 k output. I mentioned so many times in this presentation. Because in the past, it's almost impossible. You want to have 4 by 4 k output, you need to get like the discrete, small discrete card to do that. But no, it's not anymore. You can use things, this machine like this, you can do 4 by 4 k The second thing I like most, just like in the commercial you see, you guys see before, is the tenable supporting. The being tenable, or people sometimes will call the USB 4.0, the new standard. So with a tenable connection, you can upgrade the machine anytime, anywhere you like. Okay, excellent. So one final question. Besides Intel, do we have other platforms on this bridge? Oh, uh, well, John, that's a little embarrassing here. I know today we talk all talk about Intel platform, but again, uh, thanks to like Intel's rival, we also do or have the, the other platform available soon. So stay tuned and we might have more information to you. I think there's coming in two more questions we're waiting for our helpers. So John, can you see the machine? How do you feel? I feel it's very nice and handy. Very powerful. Not a waste to use it right now, right? Yeah. Compared to previous generations. Okay, let's see. Another question is, this model, uh, 1165G7, needs to be compared to, well, I think it's another processor when it comes to graphics. I think it's talking about the Iris XC compared to the I generation. think uh, a lot of parallels, yes. Compared to the one we just showed in here, like 1165G7, is a top of line like XE graphic with a 96 execution unit. So you compare to, for example, if you compare to the previous generation, like ISLAC, it's about twice more execution unit. So it's about, about twice faster compared to SLAB. And also compared to current 10 gen Lab, it's about three times to four times, depends on benchmark over your testing. Okay. Another question we have is, uh, what's the lowest spec CPU and what GPU is it compared with, paired with? Uh, we have three SKU available, from the i3, i5, and i7. Uh, both i3, uh, sorry, uh, the i5 and i7 using the Intel Iris XE. Okay, the i7 have more execution unit, have 96 execution unit. i5 have 80 execution unit. But for the i3, because I have lower execution uh, unit, so Intel rating it more like a UHD level. So they're not kind of able to wear like the Iris XE logo. So only i5 and i7 able to wear Iris XE logo. Okay. Another question we have is: Is the Bridge Pro can be can use it twenty four seven every day? Definitely, definitely. That's one of our main selling feature too. A lot of people buy the Bridge not just for home; they use it for industrial, for IoT, for the, like the age, for IoT age, or even like mini like the cloud cloud service. So no matter what, that's why we. I keep reminding you, it's like the, we're trying to do is like on the, during the durability testing, we want to measure can run 724 3CT5, no matter what. Okay, another interesting question right here. Why there are no USB C on the front panel? Uh, good question. Because what we want to do is uh, build limited size. Again, uh, when we do designing the mini PC, it's a lot of choice you have to make. You have to sacrifice or you, you, you want to keep this. But in this platform, we have to we want to keep one turn of ball in the system. And according to design series and turn of ball is really high bandwidth. It's 40 gig per second. So we have to put, leave it in the back. If we put it in the front, that might relate to you may drop like bandwidth slower or you may not able to run perfectly. That's why we always like compromise. Uh, but again, I think most of people still can use the Type C in the back. So uh, for us, I have to say we want to, but in this moment, that's almost, almost like compromise we have to make. The choice we have made is we want to make all the possibility in this tiny 4 by 6 inch motherboard. Okay, perfect. So are there any more questions? I think, I think there's one more, one more coming. Okay, we have one more question coming in. Uh, I think that will be our last question for the session today. Why put four HDMI into a chassis? 
Is, are there any demand for maybe government side projects? Uh, no, the the real interest in HDMI because as most of people can use it right away when they connect to monitor or TV. Okay, and for HDMI, why you do that? Because uh, a lot of business purpose to using like multi screen. For example, like the other times you see like the stock trader, they have using multi multi screen. You know, to one might be like the program, the other for stock tracking. So it's not only for the government path, uh, for government side. It's more like the for business side or commercial wise. Okay. So, all right, great. So it looks like we have answered most of the questions from our live viewers. And again, we appreciate everyone for joining our live event to uh, hear about our our Gigabyte Bridge Pro. Intel's Gigabyte Bridge Pro will be ready and uh, available in November. So please stay tuned for all the release information. And of course, we couldn't conclude our webinar event without sharing some exciting news. So let me bring back our event host, Michael, to share more. Michael? Thank you, John. And well, that's it. Hopefully your questions have been answered. But we certainly hope that you have more questions or want to, still wanting to know more about Bricks Pro. As we conclude this uh, presentation, we haven't forgotten about the lucky draw. So we have collected today's participants' information and we'll commence the drawing process in a while. And those who walk away with our prizes will be listed, listed in our event page and be notified with your provided contact information. So if you find our Prix Pro to be a perfect fit for in space and for your use scenario, we have a different iteration of the new bricks, which will be revealed at a later date. The invitation of the launch webinar will be sent out soon, and the event will be filled with great contents information. Also prizes for those who participate in the event. So we thank you for joining with us today and look forward to be seeing you in our next webinar. Stay safe and see you soon.